Yeah, well done. Rumble! Rumble! It's Christmas time, baby! Get the rumbles out! What are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to a very special episode of Wine for the People. This is going to be something that we've been talking about for a while. In case you don't know, in Australia we have a very strange wine quirk. Uh, and that is sparkling red wine. Uh, particularly Shiraz, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Be able to actually taste through blind. Uh, I, we know what the wines are, to be to be absolutely honest. I haven't tried these wines in years. Many of them I've never tried before. And in terms of qualitative tasting, we don't really know what we're doing. In fact, I'm pretty confident if I asked the guys to tell me what wines we just bought, they wouldn't even be able to say. So um, this one's for a bit of fun. Uh, and of course, I want to ask a very particular question. This here, this here is a very strange Australian wine quirk. I know you guys are from all over the world. I want to know, in your place, what wine quirks do you have? Do you mix wines? Do you do you carbonate them? Do you turn them into sparkling reds if you want to feel a little bit fancy? What do you guys do in your home base? But let's see what these taste like. This is a rarity because I usually only drink sparkling red wine on Christmas Day, so this is going to feel very strange, like opening presents when it's not your day to open presents. But there's definitely some like cedary spice there, some cardamom, all that kind of thing. But there, there, there's a lot of freshness here, which I honestly, I'm kind of dreading this tasting because it's, it's sparkling red, it's going to be brutal. But this is quite pleasant. Just the concept of the appropriate time of year to have this is at Christmas. And Christmas in Australia, it's like 40 degrees Celsius, no matter where you are in the country. There is something fun about just having bubbles in a drink. Like, if that didn't have bubbles in it, I wouldn't like it very much. I like it a little bit. Hell yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's bright, it's fresh, it's got acidity, it's plump, it's got great uh, mousse, it's got great sparkling components. That's the democratic sparkling Shiraz of the modern era. Look, it's juicy, it's luscious, like classic Shiraz uh, type flavours. Um, you know, we're talking about that sort of really deep, dense, dark plum, dark chocolate, and, and all the above. The bubbles kind of give this almost like quasi-licorice effect as well, so it's like a licorice all sorts. I don't know, what were the boys guessing? Like, aren't these all gonna be sparkling Shirazes? Or are they not all sparkling Shirazes? Like, don't know. Um, red, yeah, sparkling red. Um, I think that's Shiraz. Um, I don't think that's very expensive. I think that is a $20 bottle of wine. Yumbo cherry juice, um, as far as Christmas day goes, generally have probably about 30 people, 12. I think they're really cool. Like, I, I, I do like the concept of being able to pull one out of the cellar and be like, hey guys, have you tried this? You know, no one's going to say they've tried sparkling red recently. I mean, unless they have, I guess. But anyway. One number two. This looks like it's got some bubbles in it still. Look at that nice little bit of head. Flick that around, see if it disappears. It's still sitting in there. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was expecting here. This is what I was dreading for this entire tasting. It's just like, <laughs> it's like a stout Vegemite, or like a real richness to it. Now I'm not really a fan, guys. That's pretty drawn out, dried. There's not a lot of fruit left here. I will be buying a bottle of this. Yep, great. Christmas. It does have a little bit of a pruny thing going on in the back end, so it really does have that, like, sweet fruit thing going on. Like, prunes, like that really intense, sort of dried out, again, jammy sort of thing going on. Buy a bottle of it. Mousse is excellent. The sparkling component on this is fan bloody tastic. Lovely kind of, like, the savoury, like, um, Shiraz thing is really nice and, like, in the background. The acidity based on that kind of dosage is really nice. Tobacco and cedar thing in your mouth is, uh, it's a little bit jarring. I'd pay 10 bucks and I'd buy one bottle max and I'd give it to someone I'd hate. I don't think it's Shiraz, I think it's something else. What else can you make sparkling wine out of? The sparkling mellow? You can do a sparkling mellow. Yeah, if you, if you like this style of wine, but if you like that kind of savory, meaty, gamey, beautiful, rich red, if you want that best example of sparkling you, it can be in this country, this is pretty much exactly that, so. And then moving on to wine number three. Oh, yeah, I kind of like this. This smells like Beaujolais. Beaujolais and Vogue. You know those like rainbow sour strap lollies that have the little bit of sour, sour sugar on the outside? Kind of in that direction. Imagine if someone's just chucked caramel sauce in a soda stream. Again, very, very, very large bead, intense amount of carbonation on the palate that really uh, disappears and fades away super quick. $40 for that one, a little bit more expensive again. Actually, no, wrong. That's a cheap red wine because I like it. And usually I like cheaper red wine. It's $25 a bottle. If you like oak, hell yeah. You gotta, I reckon Henry's gonna be all about this. This is like, it's sparkling caramel. It's fucking crazy. Leaving the palate a little bit drawn out and thin, 
little bit too astringent. There is definitely what's fascinating for me already is there is already this sort of uh, shift of quality, this first amazing quality wine, just a quality wine in general. And then these just really haven't hit the mark. Um, and that is uh, Sparkling Shiraz again. Draw a little crown to signify that it's currently leading. Cool. Probably chippy, probably using like big bags of oak chips to make it like that kind of flavor. But again, the sparkling components are really, really good. All oak, no primary fruit. <laughs> it's just sparkling caramel. Moving through to number four. Now we're going away for these previous wines were quite light. This one's a lot more darker, a lot more richer, almost immediately looks more visually appealing. But that doesn't smell sweet at all. This smells like, smells like oak. I don't think I want in my um, buffing reds necessarily. Uh, let's find out what this is doing. Yeah, the blueberry fruit is quite a nice element to the wine. And I think the tannin's okay, but yeah, it's not it's not at that level you want to share with other people. You're not going to drink a bottle of sparkling shrouds by yourself. And if you are, seek help. And there's a whole line below. Got a rustic, fresh, I mean, I say rustic and dusty, but there is a fresh sort of core of plum, juvie, juicy, you know, red wine, more than likely Shiraz. So it's quite similar to the previous one, but it does have that oak, which I don't really want in these styles of wine. I want these to be more like fruity and yummy. You're not holding its carbonation very well, and it just feels quite flat. It feels halfway between a sparkling Shiraz and a red wine, and it's kind of a really unpleasant place for it to sit. We seem to be going up a ladder in quality here. That's actually pretty nice. The finish on it's really nice. The, the back palate's a little bit bitter, but astringent. I think that's the thing that a lot of these are grappling with is the astringency of the carbonic acid. This one is looking marginally better. I'd go 22 bucks and I'd buy one bottle. I'm good for red wine. Please, Christmas. Moving on to a fourth. <laughs> Fifth, fifth sparkling red. Yep, that smells very generic. Uh, like it doesn't smell like it has bubbles in it because it just smells like a Shiraz. I actually really quite like that. I think it's probably the most middle of the road, but it's probably almost the most broad appealing. It's not the one I drink the most of. Not quite as vibrant and amazing as the first one. This this one reminds me more of like Lombrusco, this one here, because there's a lot more mid palate sweetness. And I tell you what, like as much as I want to slam the idea of red wine with sweetness and bubbles in it, which just runs so backwards to what we uh, deem to be quality wine. It works here, it works in this style, and actually looks pretty good. Whoa, well, I was wrong. That's sweet, very sweet. Then with just this little bit of back palate acidity thing going on from the uh, red fruit in there. More leaning toward the older crowd, which is pretty much what you're looking for as Spargan Shiraz, so I think might, this might be the real crowd pleaser. But really, really hard to pick up unique characters. All of these are looking very similar. It's almost like, to be fair, the last four could have made of the same tank. Uh, Shiraz, again, why not? 30 bucks for this one. On Christmas Day. But yeah, I think it's a uh, great wine. I think it's a really, really good wine. Uh, but it's just, you know, lacking the energy of the certain other things we've tried today. But it's just very straight up and down. Not bad. Off we go. Uh, three bottles, 28 bucks. Can't go wrong with this one. This just looks like a really good, nice red wine, to be fair. Again, I'm going third, so this looks completely flat. Uh, uh Bulls to assist. What do you got over there? That didn't work. Yeah, I'm into this. I'm into this as well. Fuck yeah, like I could drink this as, well, as the sun's going down on the 25th. I reckon that's what I'd be drinking. Decent amount of sugar thrown in there. So uh, would I say it's sweet? I'd say it's semi-sweet or off-dry. Does that play well into the style? For sure, in terms of, um, you know, it's, it's meant to be a bit of fun. It's not meant to be too serious. Pretty good. Kind of exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe I shouldn't have spilled it all over the table myself. Probably up there is the best of the three, of the six that we've tried today. I reckon this is the most pure and classy example of sparkling red we've tried today. Maybe not as pure fun, but I think this is probably the best, if you know what I mean. Happily pay 35 bucks a bottle for it. Happily go to six bottles. In conclusion, one number six, Shiraz Fish is my note on it. I reckon it's going to be 35, and I'll have one bottle of that. Means King of the Castle, wine number three, $25, and I'll buy two bottles of it. And that is high praise. Um, but let's see how the other boys went. Cut. Uh, sparkling red Chrissy special. Hell yeah. Oh, good. Icon <laughs> of Australian wine. An icon. This oh, is. I'd say a quirk. An iconic quirk. Yeah. I mean, there's like iconic quirks all over the place. Like, you know, like pork pies. Like mm. pork pie hats are iconic, but they're quirky. Pie yeah, floaters. Quirky. Pie floaters. Yes, that was a new thing that I discovered when I moved here. Have what? Was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good, uh, yeah, like, um, I'm used to mushy peas going on top of pies, not pies going on <laughs> mushy peas. Yeah, if you're not from South Australia, imagine mushy, mushy pea soup with a meat pie put in the middle. It's 
tomato sauce for everyone. That's some high floater. And they That's slap. High floater. So Google good. it. We'll put the link in the description. Your console's like, free and <laughs> You'll love it. They're available 24-7 on Uber <laughs> in Adelaide. No joke. 24-7. Billy's Cafe. Uh, all right. Anyways. Wines. Wines. How did you guys go with this? Uh, One look, style the whole way through. I actually disagree. I think there's variations on the same style. So there's like mm. really bright, fresh, easy drinkers. Yep. There's some like really meaty kind of spicy numbers. Yeah. But overall, they all have the exact same kind of use but they just appeal to different people mm. yeah well we'll see if we're aligned or we won't be <laughs> 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 all right first wine what did you guys think loved it loved it yeah zero bottles oh <laughs> <laughs> i've got no reason to ever have 12 bottles of sparkling red wine there is no reason for me to ever have that in my life True. so if mm. i liked the wine high praise highest possible price two bottles right yeah okay, okay and then okay. if i liked it enough that i would happily take it to christmas one bottle and if i had no need for it zero bottles and i've got no need for this one 12 for 26 for me 12 for 45 zero for 20 so price is relevant Buzz are relevant when you buy it. <laughs> nice. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, this is... The... Hey, I've always loved this wine. This is so cool. Darenberg! Yeah, the peppermint paddock. That's now, pretty. interesting note. Now, I'm not too sure whether it's changed or not. I'm pretty I'm confident, though. Though. Yeah, I'm com confident this isn't Shiraz. Okay, what is it? I'm it's Shambasun. Oh, you're on friend from Queensland. Yeah. The Queensland. No, no, it's not Queensland one. I'm pretty confident this was. We're can't go. It's Shambasun uh, Graciano. Graciano. It's Shambasun Graciano. Get the fuck out of here. Mid yeah. sulfur too, because that's what Danberg do. They're pretty hands off for the sulfur. But that's really cool. Shambasun Graciano. One thing I will say about that wine is that way is way better than one from Queensland. Yeah, it's way way better than one. Way better than your bullshit. That they've done really good um, marketing and design on that because when I look at that, I instantly identify the labels as Danberg wine, but it is also different enough from their regular labels. It's like this is our sparkling whatever the fuck you just said, not sure as well sparkling thing. I just it works really well. I think great job, Danberg. Uh, Get yeah. into us trendy. Thing. Honestly, yeah, really, really cool. Really, really cool. I like. That. For me, things kind of like didn't didn't shine well for a little while here. I I found these rather. I thought they were going to disagree. <laughs> well, no, I thought that this. You thought this was the best like bubbles component. I thought this was really good. I yep. thought the the mousse on this was just excellent. As far as sparkling red goes, it still appeals to everyone. It's still like what you're looking for. Food makes like sparkling mellow. They should. Really? Yeah. They should. Cool. I called this sparkling mellow. Sure. Okay, yeah, sure. Whatever you say. Right, yeah, whatever you say I would buy one bottle for 10 bucks. Uh, six for 34. One for 35. Oh my god, what the fuck? Toys now. Toys now. 2017. Yep. Yeah, it's been matured very well. You're definitely yeah. right. They leave this on lease for a while, actually. Mm. Which is pretty cool. I'm not spending 50 bucks on sparkling Shiraz at Christmas time. Fuck no. I'll spend 50 bucks on Shiraz and I'll have sparkling water next to it. But yeah. I'm not spending fifty dollars on a bubbly Shiraz. Like that's I'd rather spend my money on like a sparkling champagne, for example. Oh my champagne. god! Yeah. Like the amount of like you can get like fifty five bucks, you can get a bottle of like antique Aussie stuff or some really good value um, champagne. Yeah, or like four bottles and do mimosas. Now we're talking. Now it's a, now like, we're talking. Oh, we're moving on to one number three. No. Um, yeah, uh, this is the best one. I knew you'd like this. Yeah, I knew you'd it. like this. This is, this is sparkling caramel. Yummy, yummy fruit juice. What are we talking about this here, boys? pure bubbly butter. I paid marginally more. I paid $18 and I would buy one bottle. I'd buy one for 22 I didn't like it, but I knew how to love it. 25 and $2, baby. This is the good shit. <laughs> one twenty-five and two bottles? Two, uh, yeah. Two. Sorry, two's the highest praise I can give these you, ones. You said two dollars. <laughs> no, twenty-five dollars and two bottles. <laughs> We're good. So we can rewind that just yeah. so you can listen back. To um, <laughs> twenty-five and two dollars, baby. This is the good shit. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, everything's just fucking bombastic about it. Yeah, cool. How much does it cost? Get that up, yeah. I said 22. That's awesome. Yeah, well, Hell yeah. Yeah, well done. Rumble! rumble! It's Christmas oh time, baby. Get the rumbles out. What are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. A uh, little bit out of context. Sorry for the costume change, but thought that this was a funny thing to include in here. So obviously, I'm all about this wine. Like we've just tasted it well, a couple of weeks ago now, but the bottle's still sitting in the studio. And a little bit of a tidbit. I went to my parents' house for dinner the night that we actually shot this video originally, and I was raving about this wine. I was saying, "Oh man, I tried this sparkling red today. That's so cool. I'm not sure if you guys will have heard of it, um, but I reckon I'm going to bring it to Christmas this year." I'm like, oh yeah. What's the wine called? I'm like, oh, have you ever heard of Rumble Sparkling Shiraz? And mum went bright red, right? And dad's like, <laughs> yeah, we've heard of Sparkling Shiraz by Rumbles before. I'm like, what's going on here? Mum's just like, oh, I've uh, got a fair bit to uh, odour Rumble Sparkling Shiraz. Uh, that was the one that you were conceived to. <laughs>
Because <laughs> apparently it was like, I'm born in August, which is the ninth month. Uh, this came out at New Year's Eve, and then all of a sudden, uh, here I am, nine months later. So, uh, big shout out to Rumbles. Uh, owe you a lot. So, yeah, bit of a bonus clip for you at the end of the video, but thought it was worth sharing. <laughs> It's so fitting that he loves this one because this is this is the quintessential. I uh, in in my experience, the when people think of sparkling Shiraz, they think of Rumble. Mm. Rumble, I mean, like reading that shit over here, Loggy. I want to try some with bubbles no, in it. Yeah, I like that it's written in first person. Look, this is the person I've ever seen on the back of a bottle of wine. I double ferment Shiraz. <laughs> I make it dark and awesome. I've never seen that before. First person. First person. Scratch it on the back of that so, so wine number four. Yuck. Mm, hated it. Mm, no good. Mm. Oh, dude, you should try this with bubbles in it. Oh, you did. Oh, man, that's delicious. I thought this was interesting. I bought none for 18. I bought none for 40. One for 22. Where are we at? Man, he's getting up there. He's getting up there in price. I suppose in, in relative. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, this, this is some wine I just back so hard all the time. But this, I, I back the still version of it. But yeah. it's just up Because I like the still version a lot. The still version of Pepper Jack is... is unfuckwittable. Yeah. Unfuckwittable. I, I don't... Come at me, YouTube. <laughs> it's unfuckwinnable. It's like if you're out in a what? rural country pub and you just really need a good bottle of Shiraz or a good bottle of wine, just wine in general. Yeah, like Sub $25 yeah, dollar yeah. bottle yeah. of Shiraz, yeah. middle of winter, really cold, football on, pepper jack, good. Sparkling yeah. version, nah, good thanks. Nah, no thank you. Do you yeah. think this was an afterthought? You really dig the I really dig the rumble, man. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Do you reckon this was an afterthought? Do you reckon they were like, oh, look, people love Pepper Jack Charades, they're going to love Pepper Jack Sparkling Charades. Correct. That's exactly what yeah. the... Yeah. It, like, the same thing as, like, uh, Sparkling Sauvignon Blanc in Melbourne in 2008. There was a glass of Sauvignon Blanc based at the GFC and an epic vintage, so they decided to invent Sparkling Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. That's the same thing yeah. that's happening. Yeah, like the Pimp My Ride episode where they're just like, oh, so we hear you like Shiraz, so we put bottles <laughs> in Shiraz, <laughs> and Shiraz and That's exactly <laughs> right. Like, uh. All right, well, speaking of things that started to turn me around a little bit more, wine number five. This is, this was so mid. Mm. This yeah, that's, so why, mid. that's why I bought two bottles. 25 bucks and two? Yeah, 30 for zero. Three and 28. Oh, oh wow, budget, value. Who's budget? Oh, please, Dale. I love please, Dale. Oh, cute. I love Langon Creek. The Potts family, an amazing bit of culture out in Langon Creek. We purchased actually fruit from them. We purchased Dolcento from them. They're fantastic. But yeah, no, I think maybe this is probably a crime of being open too long. Maybe it's just Langon Creek being a little bit hang on. Or maybe that just the best Shiraz doesn't go into their sparkling Shiraz. For That's the probably more like the last wine. Classy as fuck, man. This was really classy. Big change of gears, I thought. I thought it was awesome. It smelled like a <laughs> fish. Smell like fish. Let's talk about it. Smell like anchovies, and I did not like that. I wanted six. I was like, yeah, cool. Like, uh, if that wasn't going to be more, why not? That certainly was. That was um, that was my second place behind one number three is my favorite. This was my second place behind the first one as well. So yes, uh, well, I was down for six at 35, 12, 42. Uh, one for 35, so high praise. Yeah, it's 50, it's, it's the equivalent of six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's my six. Oh, that makes you think it's really good. There you go. Sparkling Merlot, Kuna. Yeah, sparkling Merlot, there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Did you make it? That's awesome. Like sparkling Merlot. This is a good surprise package, I reckon, for Christmas Day. Definitely left of center. Big fan. I might grab a bottle of that, add a bottle of this for Christmas. That might be the move. From All right. Fans. So we had we had our sparkling wine, which was the uh, Brackenwood from Tassie, as our sparkling white of Christmas. Bad. What's our sparkling red of Christmas? Uh, look, I'm I'm still a massive fan of I'm number one. I'm that too. I just, man, yeah, that's so, so gluggable. Well, man, sure. <laughs> Probably my least favorite wine that we had to <laughs> Failing that, it would be the Holic. Yeah, the Holic. I, you know what? Yeah, let's go Democratic. I think that's Yeah, the Holic works for me. Hilarious. Sparkling yeah. Merlot for Christmas. So I'm going to have that. Offset the apple card right there. I'm having that. I'm having that. And then I'm also having a bottle of that Emmeline sparkling Pinot Noir. Ah, uh, Pinot Noir for Christmas Day. It's going to be a sweet day at my house. Well, guys, that's us for this week. Hope you guys have enjoyed the sparkling Aussie Christmas special. Happy holidays. Merry Chrysler. And we'll be here for next week. It'll probably be next Actually, year, won't it? Next year? No, I mean, we'll be back. We'll be back. I mean, I mean, eventually. We haven't, we'll we'll we haven't, we haven't decided when this episode's going to come out yet. So let's just <laughs> Again. say, see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> My rent's going up and I'm in charge of scheduling. We're going to keep putting videos. <laughs> <laughs>